Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So this week we are going to discuss about uh, basically it's the next discussion on on the application of uh, BJT. So uh, we are going to discuss about the application of amplifier and how do we construct a uh, circuit uh, of amplifier using a BJT. Uh, the uh, so after uh, what we have seen in previous week, uh, we can see that uh, a transistor has been biased with the Q point near the middle of the load line, right? We we have seen uh, how we can bias and therefore decide the operating point or or, or point Q of 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 a BJT on a load point. We can therefore couple this uh, this uh, this BJT that was biased with a small AC voltage uh, as input uh, into the base part. So remember what we did before was just a biasing and we have a multiple type of biasing, base biasing, uh, emitter biasing and in emitter we have seen for example the, the VDB or voltage divider bias, uh, emitter bias uh, BJT. So after biasing what we can do is that uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, in the base uh, uh, base uh, part of the BJT, we can connect it to uh, a small AC voltage that we want to amplify so that at, at, at the collector uh, terminal, we are going to uh, basically uh, uh, pull out of it a certain, uh, so the same, uh, the same AC voltage but with a higher amplitude. So uh, the consequence of using this, doing this is what we call as amplifier. Basically, we are going to have uh, in the base and the collector the same form of AC voltage but Amplified with a higher, a higher uh, amplitude. The frequency is going to maintain the same, but the amplitude are going to be multiplied by the uh, the gain uh, beta. So the objective of what we're going to discuss today is first to uh, see how do we calculate that voltage gain. So first, before that, we are going to look at uh, the the more uh, ex exhaustive explanation is on basically the component of an amplifier circuit, a complete amplifier circuit. And therefore, once we have that, we, we will be able to calculate the voltage gain and uh, the AC voltage from the circuit values. So we'll have different uh, resistors, uh, for example, and also we're going to see here there, there, there will be a capacitors. So we will be able to deduce the output voltage values and the gain. And then we'll discuss basically uh, the, the form of the wave, uh, the comparison between input and output. And we look at what we call as impedance and, and negative feedback as well. But for this part, we're going to concentrate on the first objective uh, of understanding uh, the component, the circuit, and calculate, uh, the, uh, calculate the voltage gain and again and look at the waveform of the, of the different part uh, inside the amplifier circuit. So we will begin first with... Uh, uh, studying and discussing uh, base bias amplifier. So uh, we, I have to uh, basically clarify that base bias uh, amplifier is not the most common form of amplifier or in, it, it is not the standard form of amplifier that are being used in, 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 uh, in industry, in, in actual uh, practice. Uh, because due to, uh, to basically the, the inconvenience of having a base bias BJT. So we know that we have, if we have uh, from a previous discussion in previous week, we know that, that base bias uh, BJT have the inconvenience of uh, basically having the point Q or operating point IC and VCE of the BJT that may keeps on moving inside, uh, inside, uh, inside the, the, the load line, on the load lines, depending on the value of the, uh, depending on the current at the base, right? But nonetheless, why do why are we going to discuss uh, first on base bias amplifier? It is because it serves as a basic understanding, uh, the basic understanding on the circuitry of uh, amplification of amplifier using BJT. So, the most one of the important uh, one of the important component that we are going to have that we're going to look in this slide over here. One of the important component that we are having in the circuit of uh, amplifier using a uh, BJT is that we are going to have what we call as coupling capaci capacitor. So it's not going to be just like a, norm, uh, a, a biasing circuit where you have resistors either in base uh, terminal or in, uh, in emitter terminal for, for emitter bias and of course the, uh, the, the resistor on a collector terminal. But we're going to have another component which is a capacitor. So the first type of capacitor, I'm sorry, the first type of capacitor that we're going to have is what we call as coupling capacitor. So what is coupling capacitor? 
a coupling capacitor is basically um, a capacitor that that is that is uh, coupling between uh, the the DC part of the circuit and the AC input part of the circuit. So AC voltage source uh, is connected to a capacitor and a resistor, as in this example. So to to understand the the, the operating uh, principle of a coupling capacitor, we are going to consider this circuit over here, this simple circuit over here. So in this simple circuit, what we have is we have an AC voltage that is connected to a load, uh, and in between we have a, a capacitor. So what happened in this capacity is that the capacitor has a certain value of impedance. So we have learned uh, previously in the previous subject of basic electrical uh, engineering, uh, the impedance Z is basically proportional to, uh, inversely proportional to the uh, frequency and the value of capacitance, right? Uh, it is inversely proportional to the frequency and the value of capacitance. So imagine we have a fixed value of capacitance. So we can say that impedance is inversely proportional with the frequency. So what does it mean is that if we have a high frequency, if we have uh, the V input over here have a high frequency, then the impedance of the capacitor would be very, very small. And it could even uh, tend towards a zero if uh, the frequency is very, very high. Okay. So uh, if we have uh, uh, an infinite impedance, uh, I'm sorry, if we have a frequency that is close to zero, we, we would have an infinite impedance, which means that it will, it will uh, by consequence, it means it, it blocks uh, all the DC voltages. So I re-explain, if we have a, a frequency that is close to zero, so therefore omega, which is 2 pi f, equals to zero, therefore we have an impedance of uh, infinity, infinite impedance. So infinite, infinite impedance means uh, an infinite uh, we would say like resistance, uh, uh, resistance. So if we have uh, infinite impedance, that means basically uh, the current could not pass. Therefore, if the frequency is zero, which is equal to having uh, DC voltage, right? So frequency zero means we have DC voltage. In DC voltage, current will not pass through a capacitor. So it can be considered as an open circuit, right? But if we have a value, uh, if we have a certain value of impedance, let's say we have a uh, I'm sorry, if we have a certain value of frequency that is not zero, then we would have a certain value impedance. Therefore, uh, current can uh, can go through. So we can consider that capacitor is now uh, is similar to a short circuit or a closed circuit. Okay. So as I mentioned just now, for a high enough frequency, so if the frequency is high enough, Z would tend towards zero. Uh, so the, 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 the reactance, so the reactance is basically the, the part of a uh, uh, omega C, right? Omega C is what we call as reactance. The reactance is going to be very, very small uh, compared to the resistor. So re here we have a reactance. In impedance, we have reactance and resistors, right? So reactance will be very, very small in comparison to R. So it is similar to basically neglecting the capacitor, neglecting the re reactance. So it's considered as uh, a complete uh, short circuit, okay? So in this case, when the, when the, the frequency is uh, sufficiently high where we can consider that uh, the reactance or the product of uh, omega c is much smaller than r we can consider that the the capacitor is neglected uh, and therefore all the ac current so is this is only valid for ac currents right because we are talking about a high frequency uh, then uh, in ac uh, high frequency would uh, would be similar to uh, to neglecting the capacitor becoming a short circuit so in this case, we call this capacitor, uh, so in high frequency in, in, with an AC uh, voltage input, we, we are calling this uh, capacitor as a coupling capacitor. So what is the purpose of coupling capacitor? The purpose of coupling capacitor is basically to transmit an AC signal to the resistor. So now all the AC signal is transmitted to resistor. So it allows us to couple an AC signal to amplifier without disturbing the operating point Q. So we know that in our circuit, for example, imagine is if this is the, the base part of our, our BJT, we know that uh, we would have in the base, we would have a base voltage, right? So in base voltage, the base voltage is in DC. So uh, the DC voltage cannot be, cannot, uh, cannot get to uh, the input voltage when the input voltage is uh, lower than the value of DC voltage. So it will not be mixed up. So it separate the DC from the AC, so that's what we call as coupling, coupling capacitor. Okay. 
So let's have a look here, uh, more explanation on coupling capacitor. So what do we call as a good coupling capacitor? A good coupling capacitor is basically when you have the value of reactance that is uh, 10 times smaller than the value of resistor, or we can write it as Xc is smaller than 0 0.1 of uh, R. So this gives a real part of the impedance uh, as written over here. So we can see this is basically uh, the, 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 the mathematical equation of the explanation uh, as I mentioned just now. So the overall impedance of the circuit is uh, very close to R, is 1.005 R. So it's only 0.5% difference compared to R. So we can consider that uh, the capacitor is neglected. This, therefore, in AC, it is a, a, short, circuit, a, a short circuit. Uh, so now uh, let's take an example to, to understand the calculation uh, to decide what is a good coupling uh, capacitor. You might uh, have some question uh, right now on the purpose of coupling capacitor uh, in, in, in application, uh, but we are going to look at it later. But now we are going to, to, to understand what is what we mean by a good coupling uh, capacitor. So in this example, it says that uh, imagine if we have uh, this same circuit over here, and if R uh, is equals uh, to uh, 5 ohm, right? So if R equals to 5 ohm, I'm sorry, the, the, the writing that I have over here is, uh, I have an error of typo over here. I'm sorry, there's an uh, error of typo over here. So basically imagine if R, uh, the resistor of the load over here equals to 2 kilo ohm, so it's not 5 to kilo volt, it's uh, 2 kilo ohm. So imagine if R equals to 2 kilo ohm and the frequency is ranging from, so the frequency that we want to amplify, for example, ranging from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The question asks us to find the value of C needed, or value of capacitor, coupling capacitor needed, to act as a good coupling capacitor. So uh, in order to calculate it, uh, we know that we need to have Xc uh, smaller than 0 0.R, and Xc is basically, how do we calculate Xc? Xc is equals to uh, omega C. So uh, omega C needs to be smaller than 0 0.R. So which, the question now would be, which omega do we use uh, when we have a range uh, of, uh, of waveform that are to be amplified ranging from a small 20 hertz to a high 20 kilohertz. So to, uh, to, to, to design the coupling capacitor, the limit that we are going to, that are going to be very important to look at is basically the lowest limit frequency, right? It is the lowest limit frequency because we want always XC to be smaller than 0.1R. So it is the lowest frequency that is important. So we need Xc to be uh, at least smaller than 0.R at 20 Hz. So therefore, we need Xc uh, smaller than 200 Ohm. Why? Because we have previously, as I mentioned, uh, the R over here, imagine if R equals to 200 kilo Ohm, uh, two, uh, I mean 2 kilo Ohm, therefore 0 0.1 of uh, 2 kilo Ohm is 200 Ohm at 20 Hz. So, we know that Xc is 1 over 2 pi Fc, right? 1 over 2 pi Fc for a capacitor. So by rearranging the equation and replacing F equals to 20 Hz, uh, and then uh, we uh, Xc uh, at minimum uh, is smaller than 200, 200 ohm. So we get the value of capacitor equals 39.8 microfarad. So the a good at least uh, a minimum value uh, for capacitor to be a good coupling capacitor, this, the capacitor needs to be equals to 39.8 microfarad. So that's how we, we calculate or we design the, the, the circuit. Uh, how do we choose a good coupling capacitor for, uh, for an amplifier circuit, right? Okay, so now that we have uh, understood uh, how to calculate a coupling capacitor. So it, it is basically the first component, uh, the first component of a amplifier, uh, an amplifier using BJT. Next, what we need to do is to try to figure out uh, the uh, basically all the other parameters that we're going to use in the calculation of amplification. So the circuit that we are having here is not yet the circuit of amplification. So the circuit of amplification will be including what we call as coupling capacitor just now, but the coupling capacitor is not yet in the circuit. Why? The coupling capacitor is not yet in the circuit because now we are going to be only concentrated on the biasing of the BJT. 
because we want to find out what is the operating point of uh, point Q, operating point Q of the uh, bias, uh, base bias uh, BJT. Because the uh, biasing will give us the operating point Q. So what is Q? Q is basically uh, two, uh, two components. You have uh, IC and VCE. So those IC and VCE will be used in calculating the amplification because IC we know is equals to uh, well IB uh, IC is equal to beta IB sorry because we know basically uh, it is important to have uh, the uh, the operating point uh, IC and uh, VCE because basically it's IC and VCE that will give us uh, the following calculation of for example uh, for example the output uh, current and the output voltage. So basically in this first step what happened is that we are going to uh, uh, check the uh, biasing of the uh, BJT and calculate the operating point Q. So I'll, I'm going to go very quickly through this because we have learned this in um, previous chapter. So uh, here IB, uh, if you look at IB over here, uh, our current of base, IB is going to be very uh, close to uh, 30 volts, so the input voltage to the base is 30 volt, right? It go to R through RB uh, and it goes through the uh, VBE and then to the ground. So we know that uh, here VBE is 0 0.7. It is very, very small in comparison to 30 volt. So IB is basically close to 30 volt divided by RB. Uh, so 30 volt divided by RB, it will give you an IB equals to 30 microamp. So we can find IC because uh, basically it will be given uh, the beta or the gain will be given, for example, here equals to 100. Therefore, we got an IC equals to 3 milliamps. And therefore, we can calculate the collector uh, current. Uh, so collector current, we have it, IC, collector voltage, VCE. So VCE, uh, what is VCE? VCE, uh, we have to calculate VC first. So VC minus VE, but we know that VE uh, is zero. So VC E equals to VC. What is VC? VC is basically by calculating just the uh, collector loop. So in collector loop, we have VC equals to uh, V, uh, I mean VCC equals to uh, VC. I'm sorry, VC equals to VCC minus uh, voltage across RC. So what is voltage across RC? Voltage across RC is the product of the resistors RC multiplied by the current IC. So from there, uh, you get the value of 15 volts. So VC is uh, the same as VCE because uh, there is no resistor. So VE equals to zero. So it gives us uh, the operating point Q of the BJT of uh, 3 milliamps IC and 15 volts of VCE. So now that we have that, we can proceed to uh, basically uh, integrate uh, other components that will uh, that will be uh, basically uh, for, 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 for the BJT to be used as, as a proper amplifier. So what we mean by uh, coupling uh, in the collector is basically uh, what gonna, what's going to happen is that the DC collector voltage that we're going to observe over here is going to be the same, uh, still the same as DC voltage that we have in the collector terminal over here. So in terms of DC voltage, it's going to be the same. It's just that uh, here we are going to observe, we, we will still have the component of AC but not over here. Uh, nonetheless, the DC part of the voltage is still going to be the same. So uh, now we are going to look at uh, the process of amplification. So what we can see here is that we have an AC source voltage uh, and this AC source voltage is going to be a peer, uh, peer in, in, the base, uh, in the base current as well. Okay, so the collector basically what happened, uh, the collector, I'm sorry, uh, the, coupling, uh, the coupling capacitor, uh, it doesn't mean that it isolate as in a separate but what happened is that it's going to be add up. We have we, we would have a certain DC level that comes from uh, the DC uh, base uh, voltage, and added to it is a certain uh, DC uh, sine wave added to that uh, positive DC shift. Okay, uh, so that AC uh, base current will produce in consequence an AC uh, collector current as well. So AC base current added to DC base current will produce an AC. Uh, AC uh, collector uh, current as well. So uh, we have explained until there. So uh, what, what it results in is basically it will result in the same uh, for the collector current. So AC base current in base, we have AC base current. So this is what we call as uh, the AC pipe and added to it is basically the DC base current. 
So we have a certain DC that comes from the DC part of the biasing. We have the AC parts coming from this part over here. Uh, so we get that in the uh, base current, so IB. If you look at the graphs here, it is the graph of IB. And in IC, what we would have is basically we would have IC. It's the same waveform. It's just instead of having only 30 microamps, we would have an amplification. So just now, for example, if the uh, if the value of amplification, the gain beta is equals to 100, then we have we would turn 30 microamps into 3 milliamps, right? So it's the same waveform, but now instead of having uh, the DC part at 30 microamp, we, we, we are having it we are having it at uh, 3 milli 3 milliamps. So when we say that the waveform is still the same, so it means all the amplitude are also growing uh, with that uh, that amplification. Uh, so what happened at VC? So where is VC? VC is the voltage over here. So in VC, we would of course uh, the relation between IC and VC is just uh, RC. So we would also uh, would also observe the same waveform, but of course in the opposite direction because it is a load. Therefore, current and voltage goes in opposite direction. So uh, these are the form or the waveform of IB, the current that goes into the base. IC, the current that goes in the collector uh, collector terminal, and then VC. Uh, the voltage that we can see at the collector uh, terminal. So in this slide, we can see all the waveform across the amplifier circuit, right? So a base uh, bias amplifier circuit. So we have in input a very small uh, sine wave uh, in input that we want to amplify. So for example, just now we have the value of uh, 10 micro volt, right? 10 micro volt. And we have, uh, therefore, uh, the voltage over here is basically the, the bias voltage of the BJT over here equals to 0 0.7 and we uh, over here what we have is basically uh, the same it is the same AC a very small AC but it is DC shifted uh, at plus 0 0.7 so here the average value of sine wave is 0 but now after the uh, after the uh, coupling capacitor what we have is basically we add the DC component that comes from uh, the base, uh, the base uh, voltage. So the base voltage is basically equals to the voltage uh, of the uh, bias voltage. So we are shifting it. The average is now equals to 0 0.7, 0 0.7 volt, right? So from that 0 0.7 volt, we can calculate uh, the base current. So uh, I let you do it. So we have, uh, we have the uh, VCC 30 volt. We have RB. So in this loop, we can calculate uh, uh, we can calculate the uh, IB. So from from that IB, we'll be able to calculate IC, right? And from that IC, we can calculate VC. So VC over here, it is the amplified voltage. So for example, in this example, when you do the calculation, you will get uh, VC equals to. So it is uh, uh, the same sine wave, the same sine wave form, but now it is shifted. Uh, the the average uh, or the DC uh, components of the waveform is now at 15 volts, right? At the 15 volts, and uh, when we measure the voltage at the output across the uh, of across the load resistor with this coupling uh, capacitor, what happens is that we eliminate the DC component, so we are left with only the AC component. So the AC component is basically uh still the sine wave the amplified sine wave but not with uh, but uh, without the uh, 15 volts of dc shift so we don't have the 15 volt average voltage which is the dc component we have an average of zero we have a complete sine wave that is amplified uh now in the output so we have the same waveform we have uh average uh, uh zero which means we have zero dc component but now instead of a small uh, sine wave, we have a larger amplified sine wave. So uh, the other, uh, the other, uh, the, the most important component in amplifier or amplification is what we call as voltage gain. So we talk about voltage gain. What is voltage gain? Voltage gain, gain is basically uh, the, uh, the comparison or the ratio of uh, output voltage over input voltage. So you can take, for example, the peak voltage so it's peak output voltage divided by peak input voltage uh, to, to calculate the, uh, the gain uh, called AV. And then uh, usually when we have an amplifier circuit, the whole circuit over here can also be symbolized by a triangle, uh, an amplifier. 
So a triangle symbol that 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 basically symbolize the uh, the amplifier circuit, and usually it is written with the gain in the middle. So the gain here, for example, uh, it is an example of a symbol with a gain of two hundred volts. So if we have in input a sine wave of two millivolt, we would have in output in output a certain uh, voltage that is two milli multiplied by two hundred uh, two hundred volts. Okay, so that is base bias uh, amplifier. So you may try to do uh, your calculation uh, here. So the calculation is just like uh, biasing a, a, a BJT, but instead of having a DC component, so it's not just DC component, it's DC component plus a sine wave. Uh, so there will be a peak value, uh, a peak value to be calculated as well. Uh, so and the, in the output, uh, the waveform, the peak will be amplified. Uh, but the average voltage will be zero because we eliminate the DC component through the coupling coupling capacitor. Now that we have seen a uh, base bias amplifier, we have to know that uh, in base biasing, uh, the the operating point Q can be a uh, variable. It, it is unstable uh, due to the probably the variation of the, uh, the, the 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 base current. Okay, so it is known to be unstable. Therefore. Uh, most amplifier that we have in application today use uh, an emitter based amplifier. So we have seen uh, last uh, in last discussion last week about uh, emitter based amplifier. So emitter based amplifier the most uh, frequently used to be able to properly control the base current is basically using uh, VDB or voltage divider uh, voltage divider uh, emitter bias uh, or uh, they also uh, what we call STSEB the uh, TSEB stands for TSEB stands for uh, the uh, two supply uh, emitter bias so instead of a, of having only uh, one supply on the uh, on the base we would have one supply on the base and another supply on the on the emitter so uh, it is another precision that you may uh, if you are interested in you may uh, look into it but what we have discussed last week for example is on uh, VDB which is the voltage divide voltage divided uh, emitter bias uh, amplifier okay so now in order to use uh, emitter bias amplifier just now we have talked about uh, the component that we call as uh, coupling capacitor but in order to use in emitter bias there is another capacitor that we need to include uh, in the amplification circuit amplifier circuit which is uh, uh, which we call as a bypass capacitor so before we go into the emitter bias amplifier circuitry, let, let us explain a bit what is a bypass capacitor. So bypass capacitor is basically similar to coupling capacitor, but it, it is uh, the purpose of it is not to couple signal between two points. So coupling signals means just now we adding signal uh, between uh, AC and DC, right? So but now uh, what is going to happen is not for coupling signal, but it is used to what we call as a, to create an AC grounding. So Let's have a look uh, what does it mean by AC grounding. So imagine that we have uh, the circuit over here. We have a voltage uh, input which is sine wave. We have a resistor over here. Uh, so this resistor is basically, uh, it could be uh, many resistor, not only one resistor. It could be, uh, for example, if you have multiple resistor, it is basically what we call as, you might remember this, uh, it is considered to be the resistor of the Thevenin resistance from the point of view of the capacitor. So it might represent multiple resistor. Uh, right? So uh, what's going to happen in this circuit is that if we have a higher frequency, just like in coupling, uh, coupling capacitor, uh, we, might, we will have uh, the reactance smaller than R. Therefore, uh, if reactance smaller than R, then all the AC voltage will be appearing across the, across the resistor. Right? Because C is going, uh, uh, the reactance of C uh, is going to be uh, very, very small. Therefore, we could consider it as neglected. So we have as if the circuit is grounded. Okay, so as if the circuit is grounded. So remember, this is only, uh, this is only true for AC and not for DC. So in AC, if we have uh, input voltage of AC, uh, when we have a high enough frequency, a capacitor would mean as if we are grounding the circuit uh, and of course for DC it will be seen as open circuit so now it separates the, uh, the, the part between AC and DC right so uh, this bypass capacitor basically allow uh, allow uh, 
uh, allow to, us to create an AC grounding. AC grounding means uh, that now uh, the, 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 the input voltage, which is AC, now can be uh, connected, connected directly to ground. Okay, so uh, what is the purpose of uh, having a bypass capacitor or having a grounding, uh, AC grounding? The purpose is basically uh, to, uh, to, 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 to allow all the AC uh, component goes into the ground and basically later we'll see in the circuit of MAT bias uh, to not uh, influence the, the emitter uh, terminal and therefore not disturbing uh, the point Q or the, uh, the operating point of the uh, biasing of the, of the BJT. So a good bypassing capacitor is the same as in a good uh, bypassing, uh, it, it is the same as a good um, coupling capacitor. So the reactants need to be uh, 10 times smaller than, uh, than the value of the, the resistor or equivalent resistor. So uh, there is an example of how do we uh, calculate in design of amplifier circuit if you are using an emitter bias amplifier, how do we uh, calculate a good a value how do we choose a good value for capacitor uh, for uh, for bypassing capacitor so in order to do that for example let's have a look at this example so imagine that uh, the uh, the circuit we have an input voltage over here which is sine wave and the frequency is, is at one kilohertz so what is the value of c that that gives us a good uh, a good ac grounding so to do that we have of course here we have uh, two resistor we need uh, so from the point of view of cap this capacitor over here, we need to uh, assemble them into one equivalent Tefnin uh, uh, resistor. So we can see from the point of view of C, basically uh, in Tefnin, we know that we eliminate uh, the, the voltage source is considered a short circuit. So we can see R1 and R2 is basically uh, in parallel. So you calculate the Tefnin resistance uh, in parallel equals to this value over here, 375. Therefore, now with this value of equivalent uh, Tevnin resistor, we can calculate Xc, right? We can calculate Xc. We know Xc need to be 10 times smaller than RTH, which is 375. So Xc is 10 times smaller than uh, the 375. Therefore, it need to be smaller than 37.5 ohm. Therefore, you can calculate C and find C uh, with that limitation using this formula. Uh, formula of, of course, the reactance of the capacitor. Uh, so, in this exercise, we will find uh, the value of capacitor that will uh, allow us to have a good uh, bypassing uh, capacitor is equals to 4.2 microfarad. So, it need to be at least equals to 4.2 microfarad. Now that we have understood how to uh, design or calculate the value of that bypassing capacitor, we'll see that the bypassing capacitor is basically uh, located over here at the emitter, uh, emitter terminal. So the purpose of this bypassing capacitor is that we know, uh, we know that the uh, base, car, base uh, voltage is going to be a sine wave base voltage. Uh, therefore, uh, the voltage at the uh, at the collector also is going to be a sine wave uh, voltage but across the resistor we don't want it to be a sine wave voltage why because uh, any disturbance on the uh, the, the emitter uh, terminal would would basically uh, change the uh, or modify the operating point q of the biasing of the of the of the bjt therefore it might uh, disturb the the value of amplification that we are going to have Therefore, we put a bypass capacitor to allow an AC grounding, as we mentioned just now, so that all the AC part will go grounded, will go to the ground, uh, and leaving us across RE only the uh, DC uh, component of the voltage. Because we know that in order to do the biasing of the, of the BJT, we need a certain uh, voltage across RE, and in order to maintain it at a, a, a certain constant level, a solid level, and not disturbed by the AC uh, component, we include this bypassing capacitor, bypass capacitor, to, to divert all the AC component 
to leave us only with the DC component across RE. So that's why we have here a, a complete a solid DC component uh, at this uh, this point over here uh, across uh, the emitter resistor. Okay. So in total, uh, this is uh, what we can see here is a complete uh, VDB bias BJT in, in, in use use as amplifier. So we still have uh, all the other components. Uh, just now, such as, so this is the input voltage, we have the coupling capacitor to join the uh, AC uh, component with the DC component, so the DC component at the base. So, of course, here you have to calculate the DC component at the base. Here what we have is, we have VDB, voltage divider, with the voltage input of the base equals to 10 volts. So we have a divider resistor of 1, 10 kilo ohm and 2.2 kilo ohm. So therefore, you can calculate the base voltage over here. So it gives us a, 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 a smaller voltage of 1.8 volts. So we have 1.8 volts of DC component, uh, of DC component, and then added to it, of course, the sine wave coming from the V input. Here we have uh, an amplitude of the AC at 100 micro micro volts, right? So uh, that is the base, uh, the base voltage, and of course, uh, from the base voltage, calculating in the base, uh, in the base uh, loop, we can calculate the base current. Therefore, from that base current, we can calculate the uh, collector current, and from the collector current, you will be able to calculate the voltage uh, at the collector, the collector voltage. So here, if you do the calculation, you get a, uh, uh, the the collector voltage uh, of has a DC component of. Uh, uh, plus 6.04 and an amplitude of course amplified with the same manner at the same uh, at the same amplification and here at emitter we as i mentioned just now we have a solid dc uh, of 1.1 volts so how do we find uh, that 1.5 volt 1.1 volts so that 1.1 volt is basically can be found using the uh, emitter or base uh, the emitter loop over here so we have 1.8 volts and then we know that we have the biasing of 0 0.7 volts so 1.8 minus 0 0.7 that's where we get 1.1 volts and all the ac part has been grounded has been uh, eliminated into the uh, the ground by the bypass capacitor leaving us with the dc component and then finally the most uh, the part that interests us of course the output the voltage output across the load resistor at the end uh, we have a coupling capacitor so what does the coupling capacitor do uh, it basically it uh, uh, it reject or it eliminate all the DC component. So a capacitor allows the AC component but doesn't allow the DC component. So the DC components of 6.04 is eliminated, giving us an average of zero volt and with the amplified sine wave. So the amplification of sine wave, of course, instead of having 100 microvolt over here, we would have a certain value that is amplified. So it's just the multi same multiplication as the DC over here. So for example, uh, for example, if you have IB uh, uh, equals to 1.8, that becomes 6.04. So that, that is a certain value of ampli amplification, 6.04 divided by 1.8. So the same goes for the amplitude of the sine wave. So instead of having 100 microvolts, it will have a certain value, which is the ratio which equals to 6.04 divided by 1.8. Okay. So that's uh, in, in general the summarize of how an emitter bias uh, amplifier works. The only uh, difference is that is just that instead of having the uh, the base resistor, now we have basically two. Uh, we have a emitter resistor because it's emitter bias, and the base current is basically regulated. A base voltage is regulated by the uh, the voltage divider over here. Okay, so if you want to look. Uh, uh, step by step at the calculation. So the first thing that you need to do is of course to find the operating point Q of BJT. So I'm going to go quickly through this. You to calculate uh, what you need to do is of course when we're calculating the operating point of uh, a BJT Q is in DC uh, analysis. So we'll do the DC analysis only the this part without the part uh, of input where we have coupling capacitor in input and coupling capacitor in the output. So it's only uh, the biasing is only this part, so circuit part in DC uh, where we do the biasing. And then once you have that, uh, once you do that, what you do is basically you get the, all this operating point uh, of VC and IC. 
so VC for example here is equals to 6.04, IC equals 1.1, but of course the operating point Q is basically IC and VCE. So VCE is 4.94 because it is a VC minus VE, so you get this value. Uh, so this is the operating point, and after that, to find all the output voltage is basically just by using all this IC and VC that you have found in the uh, in the uh, calculation of finding the operating point Q. So uh, to summarize, VDB is basically is the standard way to build a, a discrete BJT amplifier. So all the amplifier that is not, uh, it, that is a discrete amplifier. So what do we mean by discrete amplifier? Because today in market you can find an amplifier that is uh, basically a complete integrated circuit IC uh, but if you want to find uh, you, you may also find this kind of uh, amplifier where we have uh, a BJT a singular component on, on the circuitry so uh, if you want to have that basically this is the standard way to, to build a, a discrete uh, BJT amplifier so I would suggest for you to uh, redo uh, the calculation uh, so the result has been shown in the uh, in the basically in the uh, previous slide. So I would suggest, uh, strongly suggest you to, to redo the calculation and redraw the waveform. So uh, it is basically the same uh, exercise and as in the previous slide. So the question will ask you for first basically uh, considering for an input voltage ranging from 50 hertz to 1 kilohertz, uh, estimate the suitable value for the coupling and bypass uh, bypassing resistor, so coupling resistor and bypassing resistor, what are the values suitable uh, to be used and then uh, next uh, the question is basically for you to calculate and draw the graph of base voltage, so calculate the base voltage over here, so it's the base voltage, this is the, the voltage over here uh, and draw the graph, calculate the emitter voltage, so the emitter voltage is over here and draw the graph, calculate the collector voltage, the voltage over here and finally the output load voltage so the output load voltage is the voltage over here. And finally, the question asks us, uh, what is the amplifier gain? So amplifier gain, as you mentioned in uh, in previous discussion, amplifier gain is basically the ratio of uh, output voltage over input voltage. So you uh, please try to do this calculation on your own. So that's all for this week. Uh, and uh, So see you uh, in the next lecture where we will discuss uh, uh, another uh, basically precision on on the uh, on the BJT amplifier. Uh, until next week, thank you uh, and see you. Uh